when he was recently interviewed by the New York Times for a piece on what it's like to work in Hollywood if you're not a straight white guy, Mike Coulter had said he'd grown used to being the only black guy in the room. Well, those days are over, as his Netflix series Luke Cage is set to debut on September 30th, and not only rides the wave of success enjoyed by the Marvel Netflix shows, but is in step with the current renaissance of black-centric shows on television. Network television is actually leading the charge for once, largely thanks to Shonda Rhimes' Empire. And speaking of empires, Lee Daniels' show on Fox became a cultural phenomenon practically overnight, with everyone aware of who Cookie is, even if they don't watch the show. There's also the hit sitcom Blackish on ABC and NBC's The Carmichaels. And right before Luke Cage's premiere, Netflix will debut Baz Luhrmann's The Get Down on August 12th. Yes, Luke Cage certainly won't be able to benefit from the extra attention that comes from being one of the first and only black shows on TV, so that means it will have to settle for being good. Now, when it comes to television shows, they live or die by their showrunners. Spartacus's Stephen S. Tonight was the showrunner for Daredevil Season 1, and fans are understandably nervous about his departure for Season 2, with two of his Season 1 writers, Doug Petrie and Marco Ramirez, taking over. Meanwhile, Dexter and Twilight's Melissa Rosenberg was the showrunner for Jessica Jones, where we, of course, first met Luke Cage. For Cage's standalone series, which takes place a few months after Jessica Jones, with Cage relocated to Harlem, Marvelous selected Cheo Hodari Coker to shepherd the show as its showrunner. Coker has an impressive resume of gritty narratives depicting both those who work for the law and outside of it. Coker also wrote the screenplay for Notorious, so he has experience with the kind of neighborhoods and people that produce Luke Cage and will need him. Southland in particular? Good stuff. If only Regina King was on Luke Cage, or Michael Ely from Almost Human, which Coker also worked on. But Luke Cage boasts an impressive cast, even without King and Ely. Alfre Woodard is perhaps the biggest name associated with the series, playing Harlem's own kingpin, Black Mariah. Black Mariah was one of Cage's top adversaries back in the 1970s, but she's just returned in the new Power Man and Iron Fist comic, likely in an effort to reassociate readers with the villain before her small screen debut. Then, Mahershala Ali, who has plenty of fans from his work on Treme, House of Cards, and The Hunger Games, plays nightclub owner Cornell Cottonmouth Stokes. A nightclub owner, drug dealer, and sometime pimp, Stokes was involved in the frame-up that got Luke Cage initially sent to prison, where Cage, trying to avoid a sadistic prison guard, reluctantly volunteered to be experimented on with a variation of the Super Soldier Serum, events that this show plans to depict in flashbacks. There's also Sons of Anarchy's Theo Rossi as Shades, a.k.a. Alvarez, one of Cage's fellow prisoners targeted by that same guard. Let's just say that at least in the comics, Shades isn't as interested in reform as Cage is. But while Cage sees Harlem not as black and white but many different grays, the law likely feels a little differently. There is Detective Raphael Scarf, played by longtime character actor Frank Wally, but more important is Scarf's partner, Misty Knight. Played by newcomer Simone Missick, thank goodness for her one episode on Coker's Ray Donovan, right? Knight is pretty much up there with Storm when it comes to black female characters at Marvel. And Marvel is working to raise her profile even more these days, having her take over Luke Cage's Heroes for Hire and recently working alongside Sam Wilson's Captain America. As for this Luke Cage series, let's just say she's going to lose her arm sometime during the season and then get a better one. Then, of course, the linchpin of the Marvel Netflix shows, Rosario Dawson's Claire Temple, will show up. But perhaps this will be her biggest role yet, as famed Brazilian actress Sonia Braga will debut as Claire's mother. Now, with the Black Lives Matter movement in full swing, this is a show that depicts a black man, wronged and forever physically altered by the system, try to create his own brand of justice. That could be perfect timing, except Coulter has said that Luke Cage will touch on those elements but not try to capitalize on them, which sounds just like Cage, a character who has never wanted to aggressively engage but simply do the right thing quietly and lead by example. So how does Luke Cage sound to you? Will it stand out in a very crowded field of both superhero shows and black shows? 
Should it get political, or is just its very existence enough? And while Daredevil and even Jessica Jones benefited from a cast of characters well known to current comic book fans, will it be more of an uphill battle for Luke Cage, where only really Misty Knight is known to today's readers? And speaking of Jessica Jones, was Marvel right to have Luke in her series, but not her in his? Share your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and you can enjoy more Marvel Netflix coverage right now.